Good day, pleasant good day. This is Perezville, Bahamas, and I just want to greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. The Lord has pressed upon me a word that came from the dream that he showed me, and also um, another friend also confirmed this dream, and also I heard another audio lately was going around about another lady who had the same dream. So I know for sure that this is the Lord confirming to me that this is um, a warning and we must take heed to his warning. <coughs> Excuse me. And so right before I begin, I just want to say a prayer before I begin to um, speak from the word of the Lord and then just give you as the Holy Spirit will um, give it to me. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that there is none like you. We thank you, Lord, that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence in this place. And we ask that you speak through me even now, Lord. I am an only I am only a vessel, O God. And God, I pray that I will be cleansed, O God, and that I will be purified, O God, enough to speak your word, God. And so, Father God, I decrease that you may increase. And Father, as you are giving me this warning to give to the Bahamas, O God, and to the Bahamian people, and even it might be to the nations at large, O Father. God, I just ask that you have your way right now. In Jesus' name, God, purify our lips, our hearts, our minds, our hands, our feet, everything, O God, that we may be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. And so, um, today, I want to read from... Genesis chapter 6 and the Lord had um, just pressed on my heart just to read the whole chapter just to see uh, basically what he's trying to say in this hour and so I would read from chapter 6 Genesis chapter 6 from 1 to 22 and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil, only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. Verse 8, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within the, within and without, with, without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shall make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shall thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shall thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof. With lower, second, and third stories shall thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life, from under heaven and everything that is in the earth. In the earth shall die. 
But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives, with thee, and of every living thing of all flesh. Two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee, to keep them alive, unto, and take thou unto thee all of the food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee. And it shall be for food the, it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according to all that God had commanded him. So did he. May the word of the Lord be blessed. Um, and I just want to read Genesis chapter 7 and um, 10 and 23. Because this is basically the end and part of it. Verse 10 says from chapter 7. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. And verse 23 says, And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fall of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth, and hundred and fifty days. May the Lord add a, a blessing to his word. And I just wanted to read that, because um, the Lord wanted me to read the whole thing. Genesis chapter 6, and I want to say blessings to all who are listening. Genesis chapter 6, um, he just pressed on my heart. And even from the dream that I had last week, last two weeks, where the water was coming. And you know, and eventually a friend, she told me about her dream. Then I saw a lady with her audio, and she was talking about the waters um, that are... I'm going to take these off because these reflecting. Um, she was saying about God showing her the waters, God was telling us to prepare and all those different type of stuff. So I say, you know, God, this is serious. And I believe we are comfortable. I believe that we are so just uh, worrying about this COVID that, you know, nothing else is, is, nobody else is worrying about nothing else. It's just everybody's talking about the COVID and whatever we could do to start our um, country back on, on, on um, moving forward and all this stuff. But I believe that the Lord work still has to go on and I believe that he is still speaking in this hour and this is why he is still using his people. And so this is why the Lord showed me in um, Noah, he said in the beginning, he made man. And so with us, he made us, you know, and then at, at some point he was disappointed because he made us because why he saw the sin of, of man, um, he saw us be, um, begin to go back into sin and the things that were not pleasing. And so here it is now, we're seeing these dreams coming, um, everyone is, you know, confirming these dreams of water coming, and so we believe that we are in the clear, but we're not in the clear, and so the Lord has pressed my heart, and, and you know, as even throughout this day, as I, I was home, like, it was like a pressure on my shoulders, like he said, the Lord, it was like, warn the people, warn the people, um, the waters are coming, the waters are coming, I've already showed you the dream, you already confirmed the dream through um, one of your friends. And plus this lady came with the audio and she was talking about the waters are coming. The Lord is saying, prepare, prepare. He gave me the story today to read to you from Noah. And he's showing he's showing um, how he gave his servant warning, how he gave his um, 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 Noah. He, he allowed Noah. You see what he said in verse 8? He said, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. There are some people who are finding grace right now in the eyes of the Lord. And this is why he's giving them these messages to give to his people, you know. And this is the same thing with Noah. He found grace in the sight of, of um, the Lord. He saw that, the Lord saw that Noah was still a holy man. In spite of whatever the world was marrying and drinking and doing whatever, Noah was still a holy man unto God. And so this is what is happening right now. The Lord is looking through the earth. He's trying to see who is doing my work. Who is still going on with the work of the Lord? Who is still telling the people that I am coming? You know, and this is what this is this is um this is why the Lord, um, Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. You know, and so this was what he did. He told Noah to prepare. He said, "Get your family and build an ark, a place of safety." And he said, "You now is, is to do this for the next couple of days." And this is what I believe that he is telling us to do: build your ark. 
whether it be your heart, whether it be um, you need to get rid of some sin, you need to get rid of whatever it is in your life. He said he's telling us prepare, prepare. This is this the only thing I'm hearing right now. Prepare, get into the ark of safety, meaning accept the Lord, uh, make it right with Him. Whatever it is that is is, is um causing you to be distracted, remove it from your life now. Begin to seek the Lord. Begin to seek the Lord. I cannot say it enough. You know what I'm saying? For the Lord to be just revealing to us this water. Some people believe that Dorian came and, and then that's just it. That was only a taste. That was only a taste. And that was only Freeport. God right now is focusing on Nassau because why? More wickedness is happening in Nassau because that's the capital. And they have so much going on. And I mean, and I don't look at, and I don't speak, um, speak it on them, but... It's a lot going on in Nassau. It's a lot of partying. It's a lot of, of, of evil. It's a lot of killing and all these different stuff. God is seeing the evil, just like he said. He's seeing the evil when he said, um, even, even in the book of, of Genesis, he said he see it. He said in verse 13, he said, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. He said, For the earth is full with violence through them, and be hell, I will destroy them with the earth. And so God is tired. God has seen the sick, the, the wickedness. God has seen where people are comfortable. Dorian came and, and, and we still didn't turn. Um, COVID is now here and people are still wicked. People are still evil. People are still looking for the number houses. People are still looking for the bars to be open. People are still looking to go out and have a good time. They are not checking for the Lord. Nobody is checking for the coming of the Lord. And I am warning you now as a mouthpiece of the Lord get in the ark of safety this is what the lord is saying right now to me get in the ark he's saying i be tell the people get in the ark of safety if you do not know the lord if you are not right with the lord you better get in the ark of safety and also i can show you where he said um even so um the dreams that were, were told to me um they they said the lord showed them where they had to be prepared this lady who was on audio she said the lord told her in the dream get some light vests so even as he, he told um, um, Noah, you see what he tell him? Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rome shall tell thou make in the ark and shall pitch. And he, he told him, like specifically he was telling him what to do. This is what he's telling us what to do. Get your life vest. Go to higher ground. This is what she was saying. Go to higher ground. These are the things the Lord is wanting us. You know? And even so, I, I remember um, last year in, in Dorian where the Lord just told me to get the scripture and he said to place it at your window, you know. And when I came back home, the water was in the house, but because at the split second, the Holy Spirit said, put everything up on high. Everything was on my shelf. Everything was on my bed. And when I came back, no, nothing was destroyed. Nothing was wet. No clothes, no nothing. Because why? In the split second of us having to leave the house, the Holy Spirit said, put everything up on high. In the closet, in the bed. I had nothing wet. I had nothing destroyed. Nothing in my room was destroyed, you know. And the scripture that I put up to the window, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord knew what he was doing. He said, I am giving you an instruction. We must listen to the instruction. Whatever it is that his prophets, his people are telling you to do, go ahead and do that. Do not take these warnings for granted. Do not take these messages for granted. Do not be like the people in the book of Genesis when Noah came and he said, um, get into the ark of safety and they looked at Noah like he was crazy and people can look at this video and they can say this girl crazy she's talking about the water's coming the water's coming and guess what they looked at so many before me and said okay what are these people talking about people who have died pastors and prophets who have prophesied Dorian they was able to share it and that came to pass you know e even though sometime it may take a little while but it, it's gonna come to pass at some point these things are going to come to pass we can see in the Bible the book of, of um John, John saw all types of vision, but they came to pass when, like, years after, years after. This, this is, this is, um, basically, um, what the Lord does. He shows you a vision for the future. So why? So you can be prepared. But because people are so in love with sin, because people so do not want to change. And let me tell you something. It's hard to get out of sin. I can tell you, I was in sin. I was in church. I love God with all my heart. But guess what? That sin was sweet. That sin was good. But you have to make a choice. The Bible said, choose ye this day whom you shall serve. Choose this day. You must choose. Because guess what? In the end, wherever your choice is in your heart, whether you're living for sin or whether you're living for Christ, guess what? That, that choice will, will have a, um, um, a reward. That will have a reward. And so... 
in this time now, as the Lord is speaking through his people, as the Lord is saying, get your heart and your house in order. It, it do not have to be this year. It could be next year. It do not have to be next year. It could be the year after. It could be the year before. But at the end of the day, you don't know where death is coming. So that's another storm. The, the storm of death. So people look at, oh yeah, I, I could just live my life and do what I feel like doing. No, you can't. Because even as, as I look on Facebook every day and I see so many are just falling away, falling away. And I told my sister, I said, the Lord told me, say, I be people be dropping down like flies. But I look at it and I just like, you know, when he talked to us, we, we just feel like we just shrug it off and stuff like that. And that's how I felt. And I say, go out. I say, okay. But as I look on Facebook every day, someone is, is, is resting in peace, resting in peace. You're giving someone a greeting of, of rest in peace. And so we, we don't even, I mean, we could even look at, okay, we have to get in the ark of safety for the Lord's coming. But at the end of the day, you don't know where that is. You don't know where that is. This, this is the thing. This is so critical. You know, you could go to sleep tonight and not wake up in the morning. And so how do you know? That, that you will promise life for tomorrow. It doesn't matter. God could promise you things. And at the end of the day, say, you know what? Um, I need Ivy to come home. I need, I, need, um, um, I need her soul right now. I think she's done with life or whatever. I'll use John. I'll use Susan or however. It doesn't matter. He does what he wants. His ways are not our ways. And, and, and he is God of all. So he can make a choice according to how he feels. You know? And so just as Noah got the instruction from God to get into the ark of safety I admonish you please this is why I'm putting out this on prayers of the Bahamas so I could send this around to um, post this on my Facebook page and I am asking you please if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ I ask you now to surrender yourself surrender your life if you are in a sinful place or you are in a, your heart is unforgiven you you have a wicked heart you, you know what I mean? You, you might be unmerciful. You might just be in a place of sin. You're not, you're not loving at all. You know, you have not accepted Christ. Then at this, kind, at this time, as the, as the, as the Holy Spirit is, is, is drawing, because he said, they can only come except they be drawn by my spirit, because some wouldn't come. And so this is why as intercessors, we have to pray for the spirit of inter, um, from um, co um, thing on, conviction. We have to pray for the spirit of conviction to be about our families, to be about our spouses, to be about our co-workers. Because guess what? We need that spirit of conviction to voice fall upon them. Without the spirit of conviction, they will never come. And so this is why the spirit said, they have to, I have to first draw them. I have to first draw them so they can come and then I can deal with them. And so even so, when you were prayed, you just leave it to the Lord. You don't worry about, oh, I haven't seen this person look like they changed. No, you put that seed... The, the prayers of the righteous, he said, the prayers of the righteous avail much. And he hears the prayers of the righteous every day. He said, the wicked, I am angry with the wicked every day. So all you need to do is pray, intercede. Sometimes, you know, we get weary. Sometimes we get caught up with life, you know. And and so this is why um, we, we must, you know, stay in the presence of God. I was listening to um, a prophet's audio yesterday. I think her name is um, Lana, some... Um, um, some some video or I mean audio she used she do uh, audio on YouTube and she was talking about how the enemy wants to um, put a spirit of defeat put a spirit of um, um, I think it was defeat on the people of God and I I, be I believe that so much and the Lord had me to listen to that yesterday and because it's like this spirit came on me it's like God it's like I feel like I'm going backward I feel like I'm going backward I feel like I'm not moving forward you know and as I begin to listen to that audio and I thank God for that audio and the time and the right timing that's what the enemy wants the enemy wants us to doubt God and to get out of our positions when we should be praying when we should be interceding when we should be compelling the people to come we sitting down looking at the, the natural we sitting down looking at ain't nothing happening no the bible say in all things give thanks give thanks in all things you know so we have to continue on he said when you are finished then you get the crown of glory you get your crown you know so whilst you're going through your times just continue to just do the work of the lord it's not easy i can tell you it's not easy sometimes you feel like praying sometimes you don't feel like reading your bible but guess what one step the lord said um do not do not despise the small beginnings because he he loves when at least you're making a step he said the smallest seed the, the seed is a, a, a small as, as a mustard seed he said he could work with that he could work with a seed as small as a mustard uh, a faith as small as a mustard seed 
you know, and so I have to continually remind myself that, you know what, God loves me unconditionally because the enemy, if you miss a prayer, he will come and he would continue to just badger in your ear and he will continue to tell you, oh, you didn't pray, oh, you didn't read your Bible and you know what I mean? And then you walk in the spirit of guilt and then that caused you to fall out of, of line with, with, with your calling and all these different things. And oh, remember when you did this and remember when you did that because... You know, he knows that when you be, when he begin to put these things on your mind, you can begin to, to um, fall in guilt and condemnation. And then guess what? That's a sin. God God does not like you to condemn yourself. He does not like you to, to fall in guilt because guess what? You now become a God when you could say, okay, I condemn myself for this or I could, could um, um, f fall in guilt for this. No, God loves you and he sent his son, Jesus Christ. And guess what? Whatever you have done, as long as you lay that on the cross and you say, God, I need help and you are seriously wanting that um, forgiveness and seriously wanting that change, God will help you. God will help you. And so even, you know, as I saw the dream and as I share it, you know, I was in the dream and, and we were out on the beach and it was a crowd of people and all I saw was like the beach started to like come on to the, to the, um, to shore. And it was like, almost like, ankle level and it began to come like higher and higher and then I talking about children grown-ups it was everybody just there and when they saw that the water like you could almost see a big wave just getting ready to just come even though it started to come on the land everybody began to scatter and I talking about it frantic and running up and down and, and you know I was there and, and the lady this this white lady was there and she was asking me to say you ain't running you ain't see the water or whatever and I told her no I said I have to work and so I believe in that in that dream, even the Lord was saying, Ivy, you still have to work. You still have to pray. You still have to intercede. I cannot be distracted. Even though the storm was coming, I had to be prepared. I had to be prayed up and ready to, to you know what I mean, to, to, to pray against um, the spirit of fear, the spirit of um, like how everybody's running up and down and they just was frantic. And I must be prepared. How could I be a child of God and be unaware that the waters are coming or that a storm is coming? That could not be you in this hour. When things are happening, you should not be, you should not be um, 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 surprised when, when um, hurricanes come and things happen. I know sometimes hurricanes come and, and we don't know about it or something like that. But like now, the Lord is talking about the waters are coming. He's warning us. And so when now we see something like a next Dorian, we should not be surprised as children of God. And so this is why I am telling you as a child of the king. The Lord is saying that some more waters are coming on the earth. And he's saying, find higher ground. Listen to the audio. It's an audio. I'll try to see if I can send it on, um, put it up on Facebook. When the lady is saying, um, get your life vest for your children. Prepare yourself. Get to higher ground. There's another storm coming. And she also said that the storm um, was, it was unaware and even so, when I saw in the dream, we didn't even know. We were just on the beach, just living life. We were just normal. And all I saw was when the wave came, no one was prepared. No one was prepared. And the wave just began to come on the earth. And the waters just began to just rise, rise, rise. And, we, and the people just was running up and down. And they were frantic. And, you know, so I pray in this hour, do not relax yourself and just sit down and think that, okay, let me watch COVID. Let me worry about Do Dorian would then pass over. Dorian is now passed over. Let me um, begin to examine yourself. Begin to see where you at with the Lord. Because guess what? Even if the waters come, and if the saints end up in the water, and have to, um, you know, God forbid, have a tragedy, their souls are raptured. They're going to be raptured with the Lord. But those who do not know Christ, you're going to be in damnation. You're already condemned, perhaps. He said in, in John 3 and, and, and 17, he said, for if you do not believe, you already are condemned. And so, please, if you do not know the Lord as your Savior, get into the ark of safety. This is the word right now. Yes, I know y'all were worrying about the COVID and who numbers, the numbers going up and this down and what's going to open and what is not going to open. Guess what? It's another news, breaking news. The Lord is on his way and there's also another storm coming to the Bahamas and he wants us to be prepared and I am going to be obedient so let me tell you something I'm not the only one who had dream, the dream my friend had the dream this lady with the audio she sent in the dream around let me tell you something Dondra bless the Lord for you you said you had the dream also so please share that and let other people know 
There is a storm with water. It is coming. The Lord has given me Genesis chapter 6. You can see in the story where he told Noah to prepare. This is why I am coming on and I am I'm sharing it with you. He said to prepare yourself. He said, get your life vest for your children. Prepare yourself. Get to higher ground. Prepare your hearts. Make sure you are right with other people. Make sure you have no um, division. No, 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 you know, you're not in um, discord with anyone. Make sure your heart is right. People of God the, uh, is a spirit of death. Even now the Lord has, 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 has laid on my heart into Ivy. There are a lot of people who are going to be falling out. I'm seeing it on Facebook. I did not even believe it. Not to say I didn't believe it. He spoke it into my spirit and I just, okay, you know, when you don't take nothing serious because you're just thinking the enemy just wants you to believe that you're just hearing things. But I remember, and I told my sister, I said, I remember the Lord said, Ivy, people are going to be dropping down like flies. Do not let this be you caught off God. Do not let this be you who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. In these kind of times, we don't know where sickness can come. We don't know where accidents can come. You can go to sleep and you cannot wake up. So please... Listen to the voice of the Lord. If the Lord is saying, come and repent, whatever you have found yourself in that is not holy and not clean unto him, whatever you found yourself in, come. Come, the Lord is saying, come. The ark of safety is open. It is open. Let me tell you, it was so heavy on me today, said Ivy. Tell them the ark of safety is open. Whilst it is open, come. Come, I admonish you, come whilst it is open. Come whilst it is open. The Lord says, come. Come now. Whilst the waters are out there, just waiting, and he said, guess what? Just like he found grace on Noah, he found grace on a, on a few people. Would he allow them to see the dreams? He allowed them to go and tell the message, and he said, guess what? I do you prepare. If they don't want to listen, you go and prepare your family. You go and intercede for your family. And I will continue to still intercede for my nation and continue to intercede for co-workers or whoever I am in contact with. I will continue to intercede for them. And some would not listen, some will. But prepare yourself. The ark of safety, he said, this is his warning. The Lord's warning. He said, the ark of safety. He said, get into the ark of safety. Get into the ark of safety. This is not just a message where I want to come on live. This is a message from the Lord as he's pressed on my heart so heavy. And guess what? Confirmation has came. And this is why I am so... It was so important for me to give this message because I see God, this woman, someone is sent, I don't know who the woman is, she sent around an audio and I began to feel guilty because the Lord told me to share it with my co-workers and I didn't even share it. And I say, God, what if that flood did come? What if the flood did come and I didn't share it with them and then one of or two of them would have passed away in, in, the, in the flood? You know, we need to get out of flesh. We need to get out of pride. If the Lord tell you to go out and do something, go out and do something. Just like um, Jonah, he saved a whole city. But guess what? At first he fought. He wanted to, to he was fearful. Oh, what are they going to say about me? What are they going to do? Whatever. Who cares? That is so, 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 so important to the Lord. The Lord don't care. I don't care if you're a five-year-old and you have to come on live and, and you say, the Lord give you this word, go and give that word. You don't know how much people, you don't know you could save a nation. Do not be prideful. Do not worry about what people can say. Do not worry about, oh, who Ivy thinks she is. I am but a child of God. Just available an available vessel trying to live as pure as i could i am not perfect but guess what i will listen to the voice of the lord i will walk in the ways of the lord the blessing of the lord will follow me all the days of my life why and he that dwell in the secret place of most i shall abide i abide with the lord every day i abide with him every day and so this is why when he gives me a message i come and i preach it as much as i could and I may not be perfect with the message, but guess what I say, God, may I decrease that you may increase. Because this is not me. This is you. I am just a vessel. And so, if the Lord has given you a ministry, like I, like I spoke before on a video, if the Lord has given you a ministry, go and speak that. It, it, it have to be just encouraging people. Just cut tracks. Let me, um, I have a cut track here. I make these myself. Right there on, on, on the computer. It asks, are you ready for eternity? As simple as that. You go out and, and every time you go to a cashier in the food store, ma'am, um, could I give you this track, please? You go out to the, the gas station. Um, I'd like to leave a track with you. You go out and you see your neighbor. Um, could I leave this track with you, please? As simple as that. When the Lord comes back, guess what? The Lord ain't even had no excuses. Because like we saw, I think in the book of Matthew, when they said, Lord, Lord, haven't I done this? Haven't I done that or whatever? 
and they were still condemned because why they did it but they did it not as a as 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 pure unto the lord and so whatever you do <clears throat> excuse me like the bible says do it as unto the lord and i pray in this hour you know i just want to pray before i leave um just so that this message oh god will go forward to every listener every person that would listen that the urgency that he has placed on me that you will begin to feel <clears throat> sorry the press of, of the lord just weighing you down that you would not be comfortable that whatever he's speaking to your heart right now to do you go ahead and do that if he say go and pray for your mother who's not saved you go ahead and do that if he said pray for your father who's not saved you go ahead and do that this is a serious time and guess what this is a ripe time because guess what people are hurting people are looking for a way out <clears throat> sorry people are, are just looking for something that will bring them comfort and guess what it only is the lord jesus christ there's nothing else that will bring you comfort I remember when I give my testimony and I used to be in relationship and I thought that when I go in a relationship that, okay, this would be my comfort. Oh, I'm with someone now. Oh, I, I get a um, new car or, or somehow I got a job or whatever. And I felt like I was, oh God, I come to a place. But it's like, it's not till I found the Lord and have a deep relationship with him. It's when I can say to a brother who has hurt me, I forgive you without even thinking. Whatever he has done to me, whether it be a manager, whether it be a, a, a whoever, a sister, a neighbor, I could just say, you know what, I forgive you without a thought. Cleanse my heart. I keep this heart, this heart pure because guess what? We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. You know, the Lord sometime will have you to go to so much people and he'll say, you know what? I need you to go and tell this person you forgive them. I need you to go and tell this person, forgive me. Ask for forgiveness. These are the things we need to do. These are the spiritual cleansing we need. We can't just come to the Lord. No, it's a spiritual cleansing because the Lord say to, if you come to pray and you know you have an order against your brother, he said, put that gift at the altar. You go and you reconcile with that brother. And then he said, then you come back to me because this is how much she receives about that heart. That heart. Examine that heart. Check to see if that heart is right because guess what? Sometimes you could be praying. You could have a need. And because that heart is so wicked and that heart is not being purified, that's what God will just look at you. And every time you pray, he only waits and he said, but I told you to go and forgive your sister. But I told you to go and forgive your husband. But I told you to go and forgive your boss. But I told you to go and forgive your, your um, co-worker. But yet you just come into God for this prayer to be answered. And these are the things that block press. You know, in the book of Isaiah, he said, my ears are not heavy. No, my hands are not, um, I'm shortened that I cannot say it. But he said, your sin, your sin has separated me from you. And when I used to read it sometime, I used to be like, what the Lord talking about? I don't have no sin in my life or I didn't have nothing where I believe it was unforgiveness. It was people who hurt me and I wasn't healed. And I had to go back to them and say, you know what, I forgive you. <laughs> and so we do not know this why sometimes like David did. Let's ask the Lord to examine us, examine Lord, examine me. What is it, Lord, that I need to be doing? Am I not reading my Bible enough? Am I not praying enough? Am I not loving enough? Am I not giving? Am I selfish? You know, sometimes you find yourself, you could give that $10 to someone to go get some gas or whatever, but you just think, oh, what is my last 10? Or I only have 20. And the Lord's telling you, give them 10 out of that 20. But where you so selfish and just want to, you know, just do for yourself. And you ain't thinking about, you know, helping someone and not knowing that that could be a seed for your blessing. Or just, you know, given it shall be given, like the Lord says. And so, the message today, you know, I just I just wanted to bring it as simple. But I, I just go and, as a, the Spirit lead, and I always ask Him, Spirit, whatever you have me to say, you, you um, just take over. It's not about me, it's about you. And so, I just want to pray before I leave. And... You know, I pray that the spirits of, of the intercessors be awakened in this hour, that we would, you know, get out of sleep, get out of slumber, and I have to repent, because sometimes, hon, I don't, like, feel like getting up. It is hard when you see that early morning time come. The enemy knows that when that early morning hour comes, that is when the slumber and your good sleep is coming on. But guess what? It's a plan of the enemy, I can tell you. It's a plan of the devil, because guess what? He knows if you begin to break those strongholds, those traps, those snares that he is planting for that day, for that year, for that hour. He knows that he, you could remain in bondage. Sometimes you're fasting. Sometimes you're doing all these things. And you would be like, God, but I've been praying to you all this time. I've been fasting. I've been doing right. I've been giving. I've been, and nothing is happening. And every time you pray, this is what the enemy is doing. And this is why when the Lord wake you up in the early morning of the hours, get up. 
get up because trust me a couple times I get up and I say you know what I going to use the bathroom and I, I catch myself and I say no God I say I know you're waking me up so I could go and pray and then I get on my face and I say God I cancel whatever it is the enemy's plan for today and I, and I declare that this day will be a day of favor. This day would be a, a day of breakthrough. And I begin to declare my day. And this is why the Lord is so critical about the hours, the early morning hours. But the enemy knows that this is the time and we love to sleep. And honey bunch, I can tell you, I am one. And so this was a work the Lord had to do in me. He had to do it in me. And so I can tell you now, it's not easy. But it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice, and you must sacrifice. If you want to see the Lord move in your life, trust me, it's a sacrifice. I can tell you stories of, 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 of me and, and God alone. I remember, um, and I was supposed to do a testimony um, on my page on YouTube. When I first found the Holy Spirit, when I began to speak in tongues, I was working at this, this, uh, this white person's house. I was, there was a hospitality home, and when I go to um, work, the Lord used to tell me, say, you work for me. You don't work for them. And so when I went to work for nine o'clock, the Holy Spirit used to tell me, go down in that basement. And he used to say, I want you to now go and dance before me. I just have to go and dance before the Lord. I just have to go and pray and, and, and worship before the Lord. But yet I was on those people's job. They wasn't living here, but I, had to, I, was, I was by myself. And when no one was in the house, no guests, the Lord would say, okay, I, you do what I tell you to do. But I felt so funny. I was like, Lord, that's the people's job. But God, let me tell you something. God say, I am in control. I am in control. You don't worry about this job and the next job. Why do you go in the bathroom and pray and then people job? Go in the bathroom and pray. You don't know why. You don't know why the Lord might send you. And so when I um when I began to speak in tongues, this was the day the Lord told me to it was a chair right there in the basement. And he said, I want you to sit in this chair. And he said, I need you to I want you to start speaking in tongues. And as I began to speak in tongues, and I say, Lord, I, I, speak, I talk to the Spirit, and I say, this sounds so funny. This sounds so weird. But the Holy Spirit say, keep on going. And baby doll, let me tell you, I'm not in a church. I'm not in my own home. I was on the job. And when I began to speak in tongues, and I say, say to myself, this sounds so stupid, but the Holy Spirit say, keep going. All I know is when it began to continue and continue and continue, I was fluent in the Spirit. I began to receive, I received the Holy Ghost right there. On a job in 2011. In 2011. And so people may say, oh, I need to go to church to receive the Holy Spirit from the pastor. Or I need to receive it from, I guess, let me go in a church building. However, which is good. That may be where the Lord have you to be to receive the Holy Spirit. But I received the Holy Spirit right there on my job. Right there on my job. Because of obedience. The Lord just say, come, sit, and listen to what I have to say. And so many experiences, I could tell you, is because of obedience. The key is obedience. And we can see when I, when I read the story in Genesis 6, Noah was obedient to the Lord. Noah built the ark. He built it as according to however God wanted to. He did every length, every width. He, he took the animals and he put them inside the ark. He took his family and he put them inside the ark. And everybody looked at him like he was crazy. And guess what? In the end, he was the only person saved. Him and his family. And so, as I am sharing this with you, I am going to protect me and my family. Now, your job is, you've heard the word, you've heard the warning. The Lord said, get into the ark of safety. It's going to be another storm coming. I don't know if it's going to be this year. I don't know if it's going to be next year. But it's coming. And so, I pray that you will hear this, this as the Lord's voice and not my voice. I am but a, a woman. And if one, one clip, my breath could be taken. So that I could tell you, I am not of my own. This is the Lord's voice. And as I tell you, he pressed this on my heart, showed me the dream, confirmed it through this audio that I heard and through another friend who, who told me about a dream. And I say, okay, God, I, I heard you. I hear you. And so before I go, I want you to just come in agreement with me. Wherever you are, we can pray, you know, and let's cover our families. Let's cover our nation. And let's cover the nations even, because guess what? The Lord even is coming. The Lord is coming. So people need to be saved. People need to be delivered and set free. People are stuck and bound in sin. People need to be saved. If you are a Christian, you should never go a day um, feeling comfortable in your spirit without saying, you know what? I need to pray for my family. I need to go and reach out and, and give some tracks out. I need to go and declare that the Lord is coming soon. 
I need to go on live and just do a prayer and just do an encouragement. Something should be in your spirit. You should not be comfortable by not telling somebody about Christ. Something is wrong with that if you are comfortable. And I had to examine myself. If I am comfortable with not telling a soul, uh, even a day pass, that Jesus Christ is coming and your soul needs to be right, then I need to now examine myself. And that is what you need to be doing today. Examine yourself. As a Christian, as a child of God, if you say that you are a child of God, the Lord said, feed my sheep. You say you love me, feed my sheep. That is his word to you. That comes from the word of God, not from me. If you love me, feed my sheep. And so I just want to pray before I leave. And so you can intercede with me and let us pray and bombard the heavens that, you know, that the, um, the spirit of conviction, the spirit of covering will just... Um, we're going to cover over the nation. We're going to cover over the Bahamalans that we could um, receive this word and we can be prepared if something comes. I mean, when whatever the Lord does, whatever he moves in judgment or if he hear, when he hear these prayers, who knows? The Lord may turn it and say, you know what, because of the prayers of my children, I will not bring the storm. So who knows? Prayers of the righteous avail much. The prayers of the righteous avail much. I believe that with all my heart. With all my heart. And so let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come today. God, I lift up the Bahama lands to you. I lift up every person to you. I lift up every, Father God, family to you, Father God. Every establishment right now. Father, the governmental system, Father. The, the doctor, the, the, the hospital, so Father. The school, so Father. Every business, so Father. Every church right now, God. I lift them up to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, cleanse our hearts, oh God, our minds, oh Father. God, if there be anything that is not of you, Father God, then I pray that you drive it out right now with the blood of Jesus. Father, let our hearts be pure, let our hearts be clean, that when we call upon your name, oh Father, that we, you can hear us, oh God, that we will not be praying amiss, oh Father. Father God, I pray that you will begin to examine us right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father. Father God, as the unction of the Spirit is going out, oh Father, I pray that the spirit of conviction, oh God, God will lay hold of so many today. I pray, oh God, that as, a, as they are sleeping, Father, they will get to testify of the fire of God being upon them. I pray that even if they are on the jobs right now, God, that they will begin to, it will be ex unexplainable, Father. They will say, something, lay hold of me. Something is holding on to me. Something has captured me. And I don't know what it is, Father. Let it be, oh God, that they would know that it is you, Father. Begin to speak to them. Begin to call their names like you did, oh Father. Samuel, Father. Begin to call their names, oh God, and draw them by your spirit, Father God. Father, I pray that they would not... Oh, God, let the spirit of deafness hear them, Father. But God, like in the book of Revelation, he who has an ear to hear, let them hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying today, Father. And if they do not know you, Father God, let them surrender their hearts to you, O oh Father. Let them surrender their minds, their souls, their body, O oh Father. Any sin that is in their life, O oh Father, I pray that they would lay it on the altar today, O oh God. And ask you, O oh God, to just fill them up again, God. Fill them up again, O oh Father. Fill them, O oh God. Let them ask, O oh God, that you fill them up with your glory. Fill them up with your power, O oh God. Father God, let them not be ashamed. Those who are called by your name, O oh Father God, let them go out and be bold, O oh God, like Peter, O oh God, like Daniel those did, Father God. Father, let them be bold, O oh Father, to go out like the three Hebrew boys, Father, even though if, if they see the furnace, Father God, they're still bold enough to go out and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, O oh Father. God, let the spirit of fear die right now over your people, Father God. Let the spirit of pride die right now over your people, O oh Father. Let them begin to, O oh God, rise up and begin to do the work of the Lord, Father, in this hour when time is so short, Father. Father, God, I thank you, O oh God, because I know that you are coming, Father. Even though we have not seen anything, we have been seeing, O oh God, the wars. We've been seeing the storms. We have been seeing it. We've been seeing, O oh Father, the economy, O oh God. So there's so many things that you have been doing, Father, but we have been taking them lightly. We have been looking at them as just something simple. But, Father, these are all leading up to your coming, Father God. Even with the sickness, you said that plagues will come, O oh Father. You said there'll be rumors of war, O oh Father God. You said there'll be so many things, O oh God, perilous times, O oh Father. Even now, O oh God, we may not see the evil, but the evil is there, Father God. And there's so much, Father. And it's come up to you, O oh God, as a stench, O oh Father God. And this is why you want to send the storm, Father. This is why you want to send the judgment, Father. God, you say you wish that none should perish, Father God. And so, God, we're asking you for your mercies and your grace, O oh Father, even over the Bahamas right now, God. God, have mercy. 
God, have mercy. God, have mercy, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus. God, I am standing in the gap for your people, Father God. God, we're standing in agreement right now, God. We're standing in agreement for our husbands, our wives, our children, oh God, our aunts, our uncles, our grandparents, oh Father, our co-workers, Father, our church members, oh God. Father God, our, our ministers of the gospel, Father God. We pray, oh God, for the prime minister, oh Father, and the ministers, oh God, in the house of parliament, God. God, if they do not know you, oh God, God, they are leading this nation, Father. Their hands are filthy. We ask that you would draw them by your spirit right now, Father God. Let them, oh God, fall to their knees, oh Father. Let the spirit of conviction lay hold of them, Father. Let them fall on their knees at the night hour, Father God, and begin to, Father God, cry out to you, oh Father, for, for a solution. For this nation, oh God, especially this Grand Bahama, oh Father. God, I pray that you will begin to expose to us the spirit, oh God, that is ruling this Bahamas, this Grand Bahama right now, Father. God, all I am seeing is drying up right now, God. God, the canker worm, the, the, the caterpillar and the locust, oh God, and the palmer worm has eaten up Grand Bahama. But God, you said in your word that you will restore us back. Oh, Father, in the book of Joel, Father, God, as we repent and we turn our hearts back to you and return from our wicked ways, oh, Father, you said you will go to the Father and you said you, oh, God, will ask, oh, God, that you will, that for the help that we need right now, Father. God, I pray that we will begin to come together as one. We begin to, oh, God, begin to repent before you, oh, Father, as a, as, as a, as a nation, oh, God, as a country, oh, Father. Begin to love one another, begin to help one another, begin to share with one another, Father. Let us not be selfish, oh, God. Father, God, because if you bring the abundance and we are not loving and we are not sharing now father then oh god some people will walk oh god in selfishness oh god and so father i pray for a spirit of oneness over the bahama land i pray oh god that all those who, who don't have jobs oh god who are in need father god that we begin to come together and pool like they did in the book of Acts, Father God. They came on one accord and they brought all their resources, Father God. And they began to share it out to everybody, Father. And there was no need, oh God, amongst them right now, Father. God, I pray that the church will begin to get that uh, um, that aspect, oh God. That the book of Acts, oh God, in, the set, in, in chapter 2, when they came on one accord, Father God. They began to speak in unknown tongues, God. The power of God began to move, Father. God, I pray for that same power, oh God. The power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, oh God, to get, begin to, to stir up in the churches, oh God. God, let them not be silent, oh Father. Let us not sit still, oh Father, but let us go into the world that you have, have admonished us, Father. You have mandated us to go out into the world, Father. God, there's so many out on the streets, God. I pray for them young men, Father. I've seen so much young men on the road, Father, even women right now who are going crazy, Father. Every day is a new person, Father. God, I ask for your mercies for them. God, if they have done anything wrong, I repent on their behalf, God. God, I ask that you forgive them, Lord, but God, give them a place, oh God, of comfort. Give them a place where they can have something to eat. They can have a bath, oh God. God, that is your will for them, God. God, you did not send them to this earth just to suffer, oh God, just to be amongst the street, just roaming, Father. And God, as us who are children of God, let us not pass them, oh God, but not giving them anything, oh God. Just like the rich man did Lazarus, Father God, let us not be counted as, as the rich man, oh Father, who will go into hell, oh Father, when we pass them without helping them, oh Father. But God, if we say that we are your children, let us, oh God, live like it, Father. God, you said your word that we they will know us by our love oh father and so god let love overcome us let love overcome us father let us not look at them as strange father but let us oh god go to them in love father god and just begin to minister to them and pray for them oh god and draw them back oh father and so father I even pray for even as they're getting ready to open up the schools father god i pray that you oh god would intervene if that is not of your will i pray oh god that you oh father would move by your spirit god i pray oh god that you would regulate the COVID father if school were to be open today or tomorrow father God I pray that we will not move ignorantly father that oh father that so many of our children oh God will be infected with this COVID father but God I pray that wise decisions will be made father I pray that even as we are opening up our borders father God that the blood of Jesus would surround us oh father God I pray that angels of war Michael and Gabriel will stand God oh God of this country and of this nation father O oh God, and that no foul spirits, O oh God, and no evil and demonic and, and spirits of infirmity and sickness will enter into this country because, O oh God, of money, Father God. But God, I pray in the name of Jesus that we'll be wise, O oh God. God, you are our help, O oh Father. The United States is not our help, Father. No other island is our help, Father. God, we lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up the name of Jehovah Jireh, and we declare that Jehovah Jireh is our provider. 
The United States is not our provider, Father. And I declare and decree that the Bahamas depends on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's our strong tower, Father. And so, God, whether the borders are closed or open, we depend on you, Father. You said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And so, God, we depend on you. We bow our knees to you, Father. God, you said every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And the Bahamas, Father, I represent the Bahamas, and I bow my knee today. And I said, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. Every knee shall bow. Even though, God, our prime ministers, our parliamentaries, Father, every person that represents the Bahamas, their knees shall be bowed right now, God, in the name of Jesus. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And God, we just lift you up and we just give you glory right now. We give you praise. And I thank you so much for just standing in agreement with these prayers. I thank you so much for just hearing the word of the Lord. And I pray that the Lord just give a blessing to each and every one of you and your families, whatever it is that the Lord is, um, whatever you're desiring right now for the Lord to do, whether it's healing, whether it's, it's provision, whether it's, um, you know, a breakthrough in a business, whatever it is, I pray that the Lord will give you favor and give you grace. And even if you're going through a trial or tribulation, I pray that he will give you strength, that you will continue on and you will not give up. The Lord will not give up on you, so you do not give up on him. The Lord said, I am not a man that I should lie, nor the son of man that I shall repent. He said, whatever he said, he will do it. And I just want to read a verse that he had given to me this morning, you know, in my... Um, devotion you know it's just a little encouragement for someone and that was so profound like right in that hour i was like lord you know all things and it was isaiah 46 and verse 11 then he said calling a ravenous bird from the east the man that executed my counsel from a far country he said yea i have spoken it i will also bring it to pass i have purpose it i will also do it he's not a man that he should lie so i pray and i leave that word with you that's Isaiah 46 and 11. And trust me, that bless my heart because sometimes it takes so long. Things that we are waiting on, things that we want God to do and we don't see it happening. And so, you know, we begin to get weary and, you know, the enemy try to whisper in our ears and tell us that God is not going to come through. But guess what? God said, I wish that none should perish. Sometimes your blessing is hooked up or tied up to a soul and... That person has not found deliverance as yet. That person has not found Jesus Christ as yet. And so he wants you now to continue ministering, even in your waiting. Because guess what? Sometimes our blessings are tied up to our, most of the time, it's tied up to our ministries. And so like we talked about obedience earlier, go and be obedient. And trust me, you will see the things that, that you have desired come to pass. I pray a blessing on you all. Thank you so much, Maxine. I pray um, that the Lord will keep and guide you even in these times and may the, the blood of Jesus just stain and surround every every property, everything that is connected to you. Thank you so much and you all have a good and a blessed evening.